Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. In this episode, I had originally intended to bring probes down to the surface of Kerbin in different biomes. However, I think I'm going to try and send something into a high Kerbin orbit. Something beyond the geocentric orbit, uh, 35,000 kilometers or so. And I don't intend to return it safely. So we're just going to transmit the data from there for this first uh, first try. So it's this uh, QBE, this uh, high heat loads. Uh, doesn't really say specifically that it's for high Kerbin orbit, but I looked on the forum and it said that uh, this is the one. So we're not going to bring it back, so we don't need the heat shield. And that's critical because I don't think I can build something that can get that high and still have a heat shield. Uh, not right now anyway. So we're going to put antennae on. Let's uh, get them on like... Well, I'm okay. I mean, the, putting two on is just vanity's sake, right? Uh, come on, let me get at them. Let's just uh, get one. So it'll be, it'll be a pointy-headed thing, but there we are. We need one of these, obviously. Standard. Okay, and then let's have some experiments as well, so that we can transmit the results when we get back. I think uh, we, strictly speaking, only need one of each, but let's just have two just in case. Oh, I forgot about something. This, this antenna only has a range of 25,000 kilometers. If we're gonna go to 35,000, there's no way it can uh, keep in communication with anything. Um, so that means we need one of these. Oh, that's huge. Um, hmm. Well, there it is. Okay, uh, I might have to reconsider this. Let me pull this off for a sec. This, I'll shift up. So we need some sort of body, and the body has to have... I, I know this is uh, lopsided, but I don't want to put two of them. It's just more mass. Um, the body has to be able to carry the solar panels. And this has got to take more electric charge than usual, so we need more solar panels. Now the only uh, tank that I have that stretches properly is the service module. Which means uh, it can... Uh, shrink in this direction as well, but it has a limit of 0.625, which is fine as you can see 0.625 is more than enough for this probe uh, Well with the box shape, maybe I'll just go for the full 0.625 Okay, and let's put this antenna down a little bit like this And maybe shift this down too All right now the trick is that we can't use the satellites we put up. The TDRS satellites aren't going to be useful because they only have the communitrons and the communitrons only go up to 25,000 so this is going to be beyond their range. So it's going to have to maintain communication with the KSC all on its own. So yeah that's going to be tricky. Now we've got these batteries. Let's put some of these on. This is not too much mass. Let's put two. Okay, and then solar panels. Um, lots and lots of solar panels. Let's just pair them up. Uh, using angle snap is good for the solar panels. They tend to have weird angles otherwise. Okay, so solar panels are on, and finally, we should have MechJeb, because I want my little display. Oh, come on, get rid of the, that thing, and, well, I guess sneaking in there will be fine. 0.2 tons doesn't seem too bad, but we have to add fuel and some sort of rocket. Hmm. Have we got everything? I, I guess so. We've got the antennae, we've got the experiments. Hmm. 
Okay, so... I guess maybe one of these uh, sustainers will be good enough. Is that reasonable? Can this tank even take? I guess it does. Amines and nitric acid. Okay, 2,900. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We do need uh, reaction control, otherwise I won't even be able to turn this thing. Um, so, yeah. I guess remove one set of solar panels. And reaction control system. I just always use the plus ones. Go figure. Okay, well those are hugging the batteries a little bit tight. Shift the batteries up. Okay, that looks fine. Now, Let's add a little bit of uh, hydrazine for the reaction control system. Let's say, let's say 80. Oh, not that. And now the rest of means the nitric acid. Okay, so one ton probe, perfectly all right. A little bit uh, oddly shaped, but that should be fine. Should be fine. Oh, we've got two mech jabs. We don't need that. Just need one. Let's put it on this side. Okay. And so this is just going to go up and then uh, burn in the atmosphere on the way back down. So that's how we're going to do it. Just like the previous one, except this is going much, much higher. Now, what we need is our Dellinger launcher. But let's let's adjust our Dellinger launcher a bit. It occurred to me that uh, I have uh, I have missed a trick here, and a trick that will solve this whole ugly uh, engine jutting out thing. Uh, you see, this. Uh, let's get this off first. This can be replaced by one of those service modules. No, no, I can't. Uh, no, what it can be replaced by is one of the two-ton tanks. Uh, two, not two-ton. Two-meter, this tank. This size. So we can have one of those size tanks. And here, this one can grow. So, I'm going to remove... Uh, no, no. Remove this. Set this aside. Take that off. Snap this on. And put this here. And we can increase the size of this, so now that the fairings won't uh, won't look ugly. Okay, and then... Okay, we have to make sure it is on the right node, otherwise it's not going to separate properly. Yes, it is. You just press H and see if a pressing H and moving the mouse moves the stage up, and then you know you're on the right node. Okay, uh, change this tank's color. We still want the same color scheme because that is sort of color coded. Get the fairings right. So these have to be. Oh, will it let me? I think maybe. Huh, okay, well doing it without them on it seems to work better. Let's see... We could... I guess it's a structural part more, or more than anything else. It's a conic fuselage shroud. Whoa, no, maybe not. Let's go for... side bearing then. Okay, well, it's the same difference, but... Oh, get rid of that. Okay, why is it doing this strange thing? Okay, well, now it should be reasonable. So let's go again for this conic fuselage shroud. 
right. Okay, hopefully that'll work fine. I trust that this fuselage shroud actually connects to this base and it's not a separate uh, part. But I, I sort of like it being a separate... The, uh, the fairings being a separate part. So maybe I'll go for that. I like the way they drop off like that. Though it does leave more debris, but... Let's just... Uh, uh, info dialogue always pops up. And, yeah, I like this look better. Okay, and an egg-shaped fairing on top. Right. Now we've got a lot more space for our uh, our probe. Now this tank isn't uh, the right size. This needs to be much bigger. And of course it actually has to have fuel in. And yeah, that one. Let's see. Let's see, the beauty of having the 2 meter tank here is that I can stretch it out more and con it'll contain more fuel. Before, if I tried to extend this tank, it'd look weird because the top stage would look very tall. But now that it's wider, I can uh, fit more fuel in without the whole rocket looking ungainly. And we could actually push this to quite a lot. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at this number, the sea level thrust weight ratio of the entire thing, and also this one. I don't want this to be, be uh, above one. So like that. And let's make sure that this is uh, really full. I think we can do better than that. Let's keep going. Perhaps extend this stage a bit. Okay, I think I've got a target here at least. I'm gonna get this one to a max thrust weight ratio of 4 and this one to a max thrust weight ratio of 8. Uh, maybe less than 8. Yeah, that, 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 no, that looks fine. Oh uh, no. Sometimes it likes to slide over instead of go up, up. Grab the fairings. Get that on. Just the fairings. These should go here. Let's see. Uh that these these are these ones. These should decouple at the same time as this stage. Right. Okay, now we've got that. And I want to action group the antennae, of course. Uh, not under stage this time. Thank you. So definitely toggle that at one. And toggle this at 2. Okay, seems like that's all set. I'm gonna call this just a Dellinger 2 launcher since it's just a modification on the first one. Yep. But uh, I won't save it as a sum save assembly yet. Uh, let's see how it works first, so whether it works. So this is going to be, let's call it the high toss one, because I'm going to be tossing it into a high orbit and just seeing whether it works or not. All right, so let's save that and take it out to the launch pad. Okay, so here we are, SAS is on, throttle is up, and all systems look go. Let's launch. Uh, now with the much heavier rocket, this is a uh, much more controlled ascent. Ironically, because uh, I don't really care if the apoapsis is ex extremely high this time, but uh, we will actually... With this rocket, I think we would be able to uh, put it into a nice circular orbit. 
um, because the thrust to weight ratio won't get insane at certain points. So yeah, we're on our way to the middle of the Van Allen belts actually, around uh, 36 kilometers is smack in the middle of the, uh, the other Van Allen radiation belt. And so it's sort of unfortunate that we're not carrying some sort of radiation uh, measurement device, uh, Geiger counter or otherwise with us. But but uh, radiation is not simulated in this one because I have not installed the um, interstellar pack in this one. The interstellar pack does have radiation simulation uh, in order to allow you to capture antimatter, which is interesting stuff. But I don't have that in this because I'm sticking strictly to engines that we actually have at our disposal. Now I'm starting my gravity turn late and this is because high orbit, but more importantly because I need to maintain communication with the KSC during that orbit and I can't rely on the other satellites to help so I need to stay above the KSC uh, somewhat more decisively than, than in my other launches. I need to be able to communicate with this when this is at its height It's a bit of a tricky thing. Uh-oh. Ah! Aha! I forgot something. Okay. Well, this is just gonna get destroyed anyway. Alright, back to the VAB and I'll explain what I forgot. Okay, so what I forgot was, in this tank, I need some liquid fuel and oxidizer because this, let me hover over the, where, where are you, RL-10? Oh, come on. See, RL-10, if you hover over it, says, ignition requires liquid fuel, 0.9, and oxidizer, 1.1. And of course, in the old tank, I had those included, but when I replaced that tank, I forgot to include it in this tank. So. Without further ado, action groups, this, and I'm just going to remove these for a sec. Gotta go, I could uh, add a little bit more for multiple ignitions. I don't think I really need to though. So I'm just going to add, as usual, for two ignitions. Technically, uh, the RL-10 has 40 ignitions. And I could add enough liquid fuel and oxidizer for all 40, but I don't see a reason to. And of course, if you're going to add more liquid fuel and oxidizer for ignition purposes, you lose mass, that uh, you lose volume in order to add the actual fuel. Alright, so that's all nice and neat, and let's try this again, shall we? Okay, so here we are again. SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. Now, of course, with this rocket, uh, orbit is going to be somewhat of a strong word. I don't actually care whether my periapsis gets out of the atmosphere. Uh, I just want the apoapsis to get uh, extremely high. In fact, if we could get the apoapsis all the way to the moon, I wouldn't mind that at all. But I don't think we're going to do that. But uh, yeah, the point is that uh, if we can, the higher the better. And actually, it's not impossible to get the apoapsis to the moon, come to think of it. And maybe that will be our next mission after this, to do a flyby of the moon and get uh, experimental data from that. So yeah, uh, if I was going into a circular orbit around 200 kilometers, my benchmarks are usually that at uh, 2,000 kilometers I aim 80 degrees. Around 5,000 or so I would be probably aiming 75-ish. Uh, by, well actually uh, probably by 4,000 I'd be aiming 75-ish. Uh, by 7,000 kilometers I'd be aiming 70. Then about 10 kilometers 60. About 15, 
50, uh, 50 degrees and then probably around 20 kilometers 45 and then you have to stay above above 30 degrees going through 35 kilometers in order to avoid heat issues but then after that you can flatten out at will so that would be a normal launch profile but again uh, here I'm trying to make sure I keep communication with the KSC and so I'm going a little bit steeper because I can't rely on the other satellites I've put into orbit the communication satellites only have the 25 kilometer range which wouldn't be enough 25,000 kilometers yeah gonna have to figure out uh, how to expand that uh, communication satellite system in order to cover the greater ground Of course, I still have to replace Uragity with a new commsat in order to fill that gap. And somebody on the in, in the comments noted, and I had thought of this too after, while editing the videos, that uh, all I really have to do is put another four commsats in a uh, uh, inverted um, situation, in which when the other satellites, the four that I've already got up, go to the periapsis the new four will be at their apoapsis and as long as I do that uh, and sort of stagger them at 45 degree angles to the ones that are already in orbit uh, I should uh, have uh, near continuous coverage there there might still be a little bit of a gap but near continuous coverage and that's true but I don't want to launch four more commsats honestly uh, I think there should be a way to do it with fewer satellites um, or extend coverage a bit so like I said I, I want to be able to communicate with potential missions to the moon and stuff like that so if the concepts I already have have a 25 kilometer range then maybe a solution is to put something into orbit around 12,000 kilometers so that uh, that satellite would be able to communicate with everything with the Commutron 16's the ones I already have up however even uh, it will then have the extra antenna, the one that this has, the one that with the long range, to communicate with the moon uh, missions as well. And I think that would be a much better sort of uh, new commsat to introduce. And maybe that will fill some of the holes up as well. So I'll see. I'm going even a little bit steeper than I was the last time. Okay. All right. This time it lit. Can I extend the? Don't know if we can see it. I'm gonna just dump one of the fairings to see whether we've got an antenna here. Extended? Yeah, the commutron is extended in there. Ooh, and it fits in the fairing too, that's neat. I'm so glad it fits in the fairing. Alright, well that's good for future reference too. And actually I've gotta keep it to 30. I think... let's see. So the thing is, I'm gonna have the apoapsis like way out here. I mean, it's not even close to any of this stuff. I mean, these are at uh, eight thousand kilometers. I want like forty thousand kilometers. Where's the moon? There's the moon. So somewhere out here. And the key is that the Earth will also rotate, and hopefully we can keep communication like that. So apoapsis can float. Uh, even out, even here should be fine, uh, given the rotation of the planet and also the line of sight issue with the horizon. But we're still uh, very modest in our ascent.
Now this rocket, uh, because of the larger second stage, is much closer to being a Kerbal rated rocket. Because the first stage, the maximum G acceleration on that was 8. So, and that's for the entire thing. So, if we could tone that down a bit more and limit it to 4 Gs all the way, that would be acceptable for Kerbals, I think. Uh, that would be acceptable for humans, for that matter, but um, uh, for uh, human flights, it's li uh, limited to 4G, which is the limit uh, that that's as much as you can go and still allow the astronauts to manipulate controls. If uh, if you're above 4Gs, it's difficult to move your hands and such. It's not actually uh, dangerous in terms of health to go more than 4Gs. It's just that uh, it's dangerous because they can't control things and perhaps, you know, push an abort button or something like that. So... I really think I'm going horizontal a bit too much, judging from how fast uh, KSC is receding. Let's take a look here. I mean, here it doesn't look too bad, but... Certainly, uh, Delta V is not an obstacle here. We will we, we'll definitely be able to make orbit if we want to, but... The question is whether we can get a high enough apoapsis. And that's th that costs a lot more than than you might think if you've never done this before on uh, with the real Earth. Come to think of it, I don't really want to burn again in order to bring the periapsis down to bring this back into the atmosphere. So I actually need to make sure that my periapsis stays in the atmosphere and doesn't become a full orbit. Otherwise, I have to do another burn to bring this back down. And, you know, of course, when I say bring it back down, I don't need to save it, but I do want to remove it as space junk, so... Let's sort of keep that periapsis from going up too quickly. Obviously, the barrier to retrieving this and bringing it back down safely is the enormous heat shield. Right, the heat shield for this has a mass of about 0.5 tons, and and then there's the parachute mass, which is additional to that. But 0.5 tons, the probe itself is only one ton. So when you think about how much mass that's adding to the entire thing, that changes things quite a lot. And also there's the complication that, oh, I hope my little thruster isn't buried into this thing. Oh, uh, that's that's another issue. But uh, th the other issue is that if I have the heat shield down here, I don't have a place to put my thruster. Okay. Alright, so the thruster is... okay, so that's good. Alright, and let's uh, ignite that. And RCS now, because otherwise we don't have control. Okay, but uh, even more importantly, we need the antenna number two out. Yes. And mission control, please. Very good. We're really going far afield from mission control, though. gonna be tricky. Where is our apoapsis? Oh darn. That's not good. So we need to push it so that, uh, let's see, it'd take about seven hours for the KSC to move over here. Seven, eight hours. I mean, you can just think of a 24-hour clock or something like that. I guess it's eight hours. So we need to reach our apoapsis in like eight hours. So we uh, push it out to that point. Otherwise, we won't be able to communicate with this. Okay, well, it looks like we're good for that. Not too much beyond eight hours, though. Otherwise, it'll actually go the other ways. So let's uh, cut throttle. And this should be fine. And yeah, we're not fully in orbit. We've got a negative periapsis, but... 
we want to bring it back down anyway, so that's not a problem. Alright, uh, well, there's just one thing to do, really, and that's to see whether we can maintain control, uh, control, yeah. And do the experiments and transmit those experiments back. So we are going to lose communication uh, throughout the middle portion of this, and then we all have to regain communication once we get to our apoapsis. Because this is the slow part of the orbit, we'll slow down here, whereas the planet will simply rotate normally at uh, uniform pace. Okay, so we've lost communication now. Oop, and it's hung up a bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, well now we've got communication through some of the other satellites, but that will end too because we'll go outside of their range. Oh, we've got direct to uh, to the KSC now. Oh, that's good. So it was only a brief blackout period. And now we've got direct to KSC again. And we've got uh, apoapsis that's clearly high in Kerbin orbit. High over Kerbin. High, what, is, what do they call it? Uh, high in space over Kerbin or something like that. Anyway. Up, and I timed it very well. Look, uh, we are directly over the KSC practically. So let's do some experiments. Ooh, uh, where's the light? Ah, there we go. So first of all, this thing has its own experiments. Let's see, high orb reading. Oh yes, uh, activate data recorder first. Okay. It appears that radiation levels in low current orbit, uh, this is not low current orbit. This is actually smack dab, well actually it's beyond, to be fair, it's beyond the Van Allen radiation belts now, I think. I think the Van Allen, the other Van Allen belt stretches to 60,000 kilometers. But anyway, uh, definitely not low Kerbin orbit would be acceptable for our Kerbal astronauts. Ast uh, scientists insist on performing tests with biological samples before even considering sending Kerbals. Fine, but uh, for that we will have to have a craft that will actually be retrievable. So we're not going to do biological samples with this one. Certainly not. Okay, so uploading data. Alright, uh, 100 signs added. Okay, good. Now, how about everything else? Uh, Gravioli detector. High over Kerbin Scr Oh, so even the high over is uh, biome dependent. I did not know that. Well, let's transmit this. Find subtle changes in the gravity field of Kerbin. Okay, good. They will want to see these readings, so let's give it to them. And let's wait till we're over some other biome to do the other one. Should have packed more graviolis. Uh, temperature scan is useless. Yeah, I should have replaced the temperature scans with more gravioli stuff. I wonder, I mean, I don't even know if I could tell which uh, biome I'm over. It's in the dark anyway, and we're so far away from Kerbin. We're roughly over the KSC, but that doesn't really help because the KSC has shore next to it, coast, uh, the water, and all sorts of stuff. I guess we'll be moving over to the mountains next. Okay, so 122 signs so far. And I think that'll, uh, unless we can get another biome, that'll be the limit. We're gonna be heading back down, and this uh, high toss one will. Uh, burn up in the atmosphere as planned. Though, I mean, next one, you know what, the next one I plan, I should probably just leave it in orbit. I should add an extra, an well, I could just use the one antenna, but I guess an extra antenna, yeah, so that it can communicate with a potential mo moon mission and leave it uh, in a high orbit may be a doable thing, so that I can uh, help with communication in future missions. But then again, I also want to return the biological samples, so maybe I should construct a rocket to do that. We only had a little bit of uh, stage time left, assuming we wanted to keep in communication with the KSC. 
we only had 421 so I don't know tough to say whether this rocket can handle uh, the heat shield or not uh, over water okay let's transmit that then so uh, very lucrative uh, science mission 144 points of science and uh, well without further ado let's let's watch it meet meet its demise Oh, that's another thing. Well, I mean, I, I probably just oriented badly, and that's why the electric charge is being depleted. Obviously, electric charge would be an issue. Oh, it's too dark. Yeah, I think I've just... Or, or we're on the dark side of the planet or something. Yeah. Well, we shouldn't have uh, had diminished electric charge on this stretch. I think it was... Uh, yeah, I think it was just because I was oriented badly. That's why our electric charge went down so much. Okay, well anyway, and we're, we're still connected amazingly enough. It's, uh, connection issues have been going quite well. Okay, so here it hits the atmosphere and we're actually still in control. That's not going to help it at all, but... Uh, 400 uh, Delta V is not enough to slow this thing down so that I could soft land it somehow. And re-entry from such a height is very tricky because of the much higher speeds. I mean, we're talking about uh, more than three... Right. Indeed. More than 3,000 meters per second uh, faster than uh, than anything else that we've tried. Yeah, I think... Uh, oh. Right. Okay, it's finally over. I trust I probably toned the volume down for all of that uh, in uh, in editing, but uh, trust me, whatever you heard on on YouTube, uh, it was really much louder in my headphones. So, so yeah, uh, re-entry from uh, high orbit is very tricky, and you need to slow down quite a bit more and be careful about how you re-enter the atmosphere. Otherwise, you will be destroyed even if you do have a heat shield and parachute because of the g-forces alright so uh... well let's go to the tech tree so yeah uh... back to the space center okay so so i've sort of been cheating with the fairings and i'm probably gonna continue cheating with the fairings honestly but i do want uh... the real fairings for 50 science now we've got 393 science and I think the first thing we need to do is buy more scientific instruments so uh, even though I don't have very high opinion of the barometer and uh, accelerometer I'll get it and yeah here's the GUI experiment so 500 more science to get the GUI experiment um, I know that somebody commented that I should invest in uh, capsules and that's true that's very important but uh, I, 500 science is a lot and we need to make sure that the first priority is always being able to do more science and it's true that the capsule you know what I should save up for the manned missions yeah so maybe I shouldn't spend too much more oh well, we've got more probe cores what are these for oh uh, orbital passes a duna huh that's neat 
So we've got, uh, we've got the same sort of probe uh, type experiments for Duna passes here. That's 50 science, but we're not near Duna yet. We're not we're not doing that yet. Lights might be a thing. Um, so yeah, it's the same old browsing through these and trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I don't sense that we need a lot of huge rockets yet, especially since we don't really have the tank and infrastructure for it. I mean, it's hard to... If the best fair... I mean, technically I'm using the side fairings in order to make fairings on the top, which is, which is why... When I say uh, I'm cheating with the fairings, I mean... I'm using the things that are supposed to hold the fairings on the side to put a fairing on the top, and that's that's why it's a little bit uh, a little bit dubious. Uh, these are the ones that are supposed to hold the fairings on the top, and right now I'm supposed to be limited to 1.25. Of course, the fairing that I just used for the rocket you just saw was two meters, so I'm already uh, pushing my way past this, even though I haven't gotten these parts yet. And that might be why that antenna was giving me trouble in some of the earlier things. I mean, because it's not a proper fairing on top right now. I don't know. Oh, uh, except, except for the... Uh, I'm not going to get into it anymore. Alright, so... But yeah, I think uh, it's a good case to save up for the Kerbals. We are pretty far into it as far as uh, unmanned missions are concerned, and I think we could even probably toss something at the moon right now. And so, really, once you're at that point, saving up for doing Kerbal Science is probably a thing. Alright, so, so I guess that's the plan, to uh, aim for early capsules next, and I'll just skip the fairings since I seem to be uh, doing well without them. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you do have comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.